How's it going everyone? Justin again as always. Thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. I hope you're enjoying your work week so far. So the much anticipated toolbox tour uh, from here at the house. Okay, Because I've been asked a lot during the live streams when am I going to do a uh, at home toolbox tour. So I figured I'd just kind of share with you my little setup on the day to day of what it is that I actually utilize for the most part. And then on the weekends when I'm actually repairing anything which is very few and far between, but I do end up preparing some stuff here at the house and doing my own service work on my own vehicle. So I figured I would just go ahead and do the video for you guys and share with you what it is that I got. So I'm trying out something new today. It's a Carl Strauss Red Trolley Ale. It's actually pretty good. Um, I know I've been trying these fancy beers lately. I know I've been kind of trying some of these fancier beers out, and it's kind of been nice, to be honest. It's a nice little change, kind of breaks up the monotony of the cheap stuff. But all right, looking at the uh, total work surface itself, um, I have put cylinder heads on here, intake manifolds, uh, crankshafts. I mean, I've done all different types of stuff on here, but mostly I use it as my YouTube entertainment center, so to speak. This is where I hang out with everybody on the live streams and shoot videos and edit them, etc. Over to my left here, you'll see that I have the uh, six-ton hydraulic press from Harbor Freight. Haven't used it yet. Uh, the idea behind it was to use it to press the wrist pins uh, through the pistons for the 4.7 stroker build uh, that I haven't done anything with. It costs money, money that I don't have. I don't even have a Jeep to put it in, so I'm not wildly pressed to go ahead and try to speed that along. It'll just be one of those lifetime build series kind of thing so the next time I get to it I get to it. I've also got some little hobbyist tools kind of here in this tucked into this magnetic tray uh, nothing too fancy you guys have probably seen those on my RC builds I've got some carbide bits here on top as well as some stamps that somebody sent me for the top of uh, pistons and whatnot I've also got this PT screwdriver set which has been awesome I usually grab those on the fly I love having them there and accessible the other end, which you'll see, is the launch scan tool, which I have to go through. There's a fix or a procedure that they want me to go through and then retry the tool and see if it fixes it. Uh, I had another issue with the scan tool earlier on that I'll uh, share with you in another video. Then I've got the Matco subwoofer speaker down there for when we jam out during live streams and our little uh, giveaway bucket full with raffle tickets. First drawer, hopefully you guys can see that. Yep, gonna have to tilt you down. Hang on. All right, it's gonna get kind of shaky here for a minute. I had to go off tripod. So starting here on our left, I've got some oversized half-inch metric sockets. I believe I go from 21 up to like 30 or something like that. And then I've got our half-inch going from 10 millimeter deep to 19, and then 10 shallow to 19. Then I've got my 3/8 SAE and metric set from Duralast. Those are there. And then I've got my Cornwell. 3 8 drive 12 point uh, sockets. These ones actually do fit over the um, cylinder head bolts on the Jeeps. I've got my trusty ratchets here. This is the $7 special from O'Reilly's. Couple of snap ons. I got a Carlisle uh, bit driver, etc. I got an extension that I most recently used that I didn't put back in its spot because I just need to pull a spark plug. So I left those two items out and about. Uh, some of these Torx bits, these are actually Husky, some quarter inch Duralast, uh, sockets SAE and metric, as well as a couple of little adapters that I have here. In this box, I have all my loose extensions and some of my smaller quarter inch ratchets, 3 8 ratchets, the smallest ratchet ever made by Snap-on. And then I've got a few universal adapters and things like that. Just kind of keeps things somewhat neat, but for the most part, you're going to see a mess. Okay, this is organized chaos at its finest. In here, I've just got things like a headlamp. This is for a, a bearing to install wheel studs, um, snot rag. I've got some zip ties, extra bulb for the Mariner. I had one burn out. Some fuses, little tiny clips, and interior door clips, things like that. Some air fittings. These are all. Um, valve stem caps, random screws and assortments, little plug offs, some heat shrink, some old Mopar PAG die for the AC system, 
and then some other random assortments of nuts and bolts there. The 3 8 locking extensions from Cornwell. My Husky quarter inch drive inch pound torque wrench. And then back here is the Matco uh, flex head 3 8 drive foot pound torque wrench. And these are kind of nice and handy to have around the house, especially when I'm doing my own cylinder head bolts and things like that. So I like having that stuff. We have a few sets at work, so there's no need for me to have my axle nut socket set there, so I keep that here. The uh, quarter inch driver from Matco, which the snap ring was bad. I got these Wiley X gloves that I used to use for riding until I upgraded. Now they're work gloves. I got the 3 8 drive power torque cordless from O'Reilly's with the charger there. Then I got the 3 8 cordless from Matco. I got the half inch Carlisle ratchet. I got a snap on one. This was for turning cranks. I just grabbed this on the fly. It was one of the last tools that I bought before we lost our snap on rep. I got a half inch Mac breaker bar. I think I gave away the 3 8 a long time ago. Super long quarter inch extension. I think this is from uh, Cornwell. Yogurt cups for organization. Extraction sockets for lug nuts that get rounded off or swelled up that you have to try to extract. Those are blue point. Those are kind of nice to have. These are some half inch sizes right here as far as lug nut sockets go. Covers like 19 and a half, 21 and a half, 22 and a half. I think I did a video on those a while back. Got those here because Shane has a set and I think Joey also has a set. Nail brush for cleaning. This was one from Oregon, but it still holds up. The uh, next drawer here is more of like the wrench driver kind of drawer and some miscellaneous stuff. Again, organized chaos at its finest. So starting off over here, I got the Matco screwdriver set. This is a uh, channel lock pick set. Beer bottle opener, some chainsaw files, and uh, tools for chainsaw adjustment, chain adjustment, things like that. A couple of screwdrivers, these are the smaller number one flathead number one Phillips from Snap-on. You might have seen me use those a couple times. Gerber, that's my military Gerber. Then I've got this super long Snap-on flathead. That kind of helps out when I'm setting things top dead center if I don't have anyone around. Little scraping tool. Pittsburgh ratchet wrenches. I keep these here with the flex head. They're super nice to get down in the weird spots. I've got some smaller size screwdrivers, mini drivers, things like that. Pinouts. The serpentine belt driver toolkit. This is just an extra see through uh, shield for my welding helmet. Craftsman elbow wrenches. These things are awesome. An entire Made in USA Craftsman wrench set and a sort of tool tray that you can find on Amazon. And I traded all those ignition wrenches, those little cheap ignition wrenches in for every single size of wrench. They warranted them out for me, no problem. Then I've got some uh, snap-on double box end wrenches here with a zero degree offset, but it's got a little stepper. Those are handy for torque converter bolts and things like that. A little blue point grabber tool with the three jaws at the end. This thing's kind of nice when the magnet just won't work. Eh, you get the three jaws to come out and grab stuff. All right, next drawer on the left. So in here I've got my tap and die set, my Cornwall crescent wrenches. These things are freaking phenomenal to have. I've used those for construction too. Love having them. The Matco Metric and SAE Allens. These work great from the dirt bike as well as the KTM when I'm taking panels and things off. This is a PT chisel or scraper. I bought a three-piece VIM set, took that to work, brought this one home, should I ever need it for lower oil pans. I got these for free from Precision Fuel Pumps. That was nice, I left those here. Next drawer, this is more of like my machinist drawer, okay? So I've been wanting to do some more measuring and machinist kind of style work here at the house. Uh, I've got this digital veneer caliper that I picked up, Empire. This was over at Home Depot, Home Depot Special. Uh, I've got the hole saw kit from Matco. These are some tools that I use for the hobby build, which I need to get back to. I haven't touched that Jeep build in a couple months now. My old outside machinist book from when I was working in the shipyard. I was told this thing is my machinist Bible and to keep it, so I did. I never got rid of it. I got some um, snap gauges, so in 
inside micrometer snap gauges. Those things are nice. Got those from Harbor Freight. They work well. Little tiny dead blow for small things. This is a magnetic. <clears throat> Let me get this thing open. Magnetic dial gauge. That works great for rear end adjustments. I haven't used it in a while. Then I've got my, hang on, let me re-straighten this box out. Now it doesn't want to close. Come on, man, get in there. I got this for valve spring depression. This is the uh, rolling torque wrench, CDI, Snap-on brand. Got this off of Amazon. It's been worked out well for me. Really love having it. God, I wish this camera would focus more. And it's not. It's a good torque wrench, okay? Especially if you're trying to get total torque to rotate on rear ends and things like that. In here, just a little tiny box with some hobby knives. And then I got this old engineering kit with compass and protractor stuff. The machinist uh, straight edge, so precision straight edge for measuring cylinder head, warpage. Got some helicoils, a couple of blades, permanent marker, paint marker tape measure. This was for when I was doing uh, supporting and polishing on the intake and head. So that was kind of cool. I enjoyed trying that out. This is kind of like the busted nut drawer. So I got my uh, impact gun, Silver Eagle, not the best in the world. My snap-on cutoff wheel. This is a cobalt punch and chisel set. Some grinding and sanding discs. This is by far one of my favorite C-clamps. I think I pointed that out to you in a Harbor Freight video. I almost bought another one, but didn't see an immediate need, but I know where to get them, and they're just my favorite ones, specifically because of the quick uh, disconnect and button here. Hyper Tough Hammer, kind of nice for underneath the car. Here's a uh, Pittsburgh pipe wrench I was telling you guys about. This thing is awesome. I've had this now for about nine years. Super amazing, love having it. Uh, Single piston brake caliper retractor tool, hyper tough pry bar, lady slipper, tube bender, BFH from Cornwell or little BFH, couple of uh, Mac die grinders, the straight and the 90. This is a Titan razor blade scraper. You can see that the blades have a tendency of breaking. My smallest snap on pry bar. This is a spanner wrench for. Now I bought this when I was working on dirt track cars. This was to set the uh, side bearing clearance on rear ends for nine inches. So I picked that up for that specifically. Haven't done that in a while. I'd have to refresh my memory. This is actually a snap-on tool, but I don't use it at work. But it's to hold the punches and chisels for you while you beat on them. And it's just kind of nice to have, especially if your hands are oily and greasy. Some brake tools. This is a blueprint seal and race driver kit. I think it's pretty comparable to the Maddox one. A uh, little tiny tube cutter. This is a brake caliper hanger. Uh, this was a Chevy camber knockout tool, but the guys at Chrysler used it for the Jeep Wrangler lifts, which is pretty awesome. I got a bunch of these Matco uh, punches and chisels and impact hammer and things like that. There's a lighter. I also got a couple of the Harbor Freight ones in here too, if I'm not mistaken. These things are awesome though. And then here's some more of the Matco bits. This was a Matco one. These were actually an AutoZone special, but it came with an adapter that I can hook it up to an impact hammer. So I just keep all those there for taking tie rods off and things like that. So pretty nice, pretty nice. All right, let's go to the bottom drawer. This is really my junkie drawer right here. So in here, it's really miscellaneous everything from oil filter wrenches, electrical tape, cotter pins, heat shrink, nuts, bolts, vacuum hoses, uh, hose clamps, crimpies, plug offs, lights, extra wire, battery terminal, protector deals, some ball bearings because I was using these for a little art project, the Toyota oil filter right here, and then the, this one was for Ford. More tape, UV glasses, some more heat shrink, stuff like that. Masking tape, just a real junk drawer. Oh, some, not JB Well, but it's epoxy that you could pick up from Harbor Freight. 
And then this one is pretty much my little electrical drawer. I've got the snap-on uh, bore scope. I got the Klein clamping meter and then the Klein DVLM. This is the golden tool. My buddy John gave this to me. He was a Chrysler for many, many years. Chrysler certified master tech, Mazda certified master tech, Viper certified tech. I mean, you name it, he had it. He gave that to me. It's actually a continuity meter, so if you was to touch the leads together from one end to one end, it just goes beep through. It's pretty cool, actually. Uh, Harbor Freight test light. This is a Harbor Freight soldering torch. Uh, I got thermometer, quantum flashlight. I think that's a Harbor Freight special. Some uh, cloth or abrasive tape that I got from Chrysler a long time ago. We actually had to pay for this stuff. I think it was like 17 bucks a roll. So I don't leave that at work. All right, the plier drawer, the phenomenal plier drawer. So stuff that I have here at the house. Oh, this is a Matco oil filter wrench, pruning shears. I think these were the Matco push pin pliers that had been bent and tweaked and whatever. Uh, some lime pliers. A couple of these hose pinch off. I love these so much. I had bought in two more just so I had some here at the house. And nippers. These were the worst pinch off pliers ever from Snap On. I just bought one to try them out. Didn't like it at all. And we don't have a Snap On rep. These are my Mac um, tongue and groove pliers. I actually got these for tie rod adjustments when I worked at Sears, so I've had those for a long time. These I got on a smoking deal because the Cornwall guy was letting everything go at wholesale cost. So I picked this. Everything orange you see here, I got for like 15 or 20 bucks a piece. So I wasn't going to pass that up by any means. And these are my flat build Mac pliers. Those things are nice. Roofing knife. Here's some little nippers. Some Duralast 90 degree straight 45s. These are the Mayhew seal removers. Non-marring, scarring. You guys saw these the other day. Just added those here because I want some for the house when I have to replace hoses. Okay, so I gave these, uh, I only have one left. The other ones that I had, I think I gave back to Snap-on for Snap-on credit. Um, anyway, I just didn't use them enough. All right, these are my Mac pliers, slip joints, they're nice. These are Harbor Freight wire strippers. They kinda work and kinda don't. Then I got these DeWalt, camera's being stupid. Duralast slip joints, these are my Mac uh, wire nippers. I've had these for a freaking long, long time. We put our initials and stuff on them when we were over at Sears. People kept stealing stuff. Uh, these were some commercial electrical crimpers I picked up on the fly from Home Depot. Fat Max cutting shears. This is a Harbor Freight wire, mechanic wire plier. These things are awesome. And this was for a GoPro mount that did not fit on the motorcycle. Last drawer, kind of miscellaneous and whatever. Chains, chargers, extra flashlight uh, that I had gotten warrantied. This is for removing fuel from a tank. I bought it because I saw it used, thought it was the coolest thing. I had to do a couple of fuel pumps here at the house, thought I would use it. Never did, just sat in the door. This is the uh, Cornwell oxygen and oil pressure kit. I've used it a handful of times. I got some specific ones that I use at work. And then this is just a plastic riveter that I used to use all the time at Chrysler. It was my go-to tool. But now I don't replace plastic rivets anymore. This is all just chains and junk, fiber rags, shop rags. Mechanic wire, and then down here at the bottom, which you can barely see, but that's my master ball joint press set from Matco. All right, so nothing too crazy. As you can see, most of my stuff is at work. Uh, I don't really have a lot here tester-wise. Um, once upon a time ago, everything tester-wise was here because, well, most everybody had it at work. So I didn't have an immediate need for it. I didn't bother taking it because all I was doing was a lot of uh, engine mechanical stuff, R&R work. Didn't have a need for all that. Then I started running into more and more of a need for specialty tools, pullers, things like that. And I started running into a need for specialty wrenches and other things like that that I just couldn't fit in my service cart anymore. And so I ran to a point where I needed another box. I just made the decision that I didn't want to take the Cornwall one to work and I was going to get a Harbor Freight one uh, for a couple reasons. One, 
We don't have Cornwall anymore, so you know, there's no way for me to actually get the drawers fixed. I think somebody said you can call them and send them the part number and they'd ship them to you, yada, yada, yada. But look, long story short, I was looking to keep the box that I had, the Cornwall one here at the house. It's much easier just to fill up an empty box than it is to unload, reload, unload, reload. So I was like, whatever. Uh, but the Harbor Freight box has been absolutely phenomenal. I've loved having it. I've been able to do things uh, on it that I wasn't sure if it was gonna be able to work or, or take a beating, and it just does, and it just keeps on working for me. It fits quite a bit. I still got one empty drawer that I've managed to maintain, specifically for my motorcycle stuff. I'm still trying to get the locker that attaches to the side. Uh, but you know what? In time, no big rush. All right, so that'll pretty much wrap up today's video. That was my toolbox tour for what it is that I have here at the house. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thanks as always for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Look, I had a handful of people asking for this video, so I figured I would go ahead and knock it out of the ballpark for you. Well, that'll do it. We'll see you guys next time. Doses.